Good morning. This is the Leafs Convo podcast for Vanguard Northeast Realty in Scarborough, Vanguard, N-E dot C-A. I'm Norman James in London, Ontario, joined as always by Mike Agello in Buffalo, New York. Leafs, Blackhawks tonight should be a lot of fun, we hope. So to get ready for it, let's pour a big cup of combo and start right now. Michael, how are you? Good morning, Norman. Uh, I'm well. Uh, how are you doing? Not too bad. I'm over that loss to the Lightning. Uh, thankfully, we put this Morgan Riley nonsense in the rearview mirror, too. Let's focus on the Blackhawks, knocking them all over the place, and then moving forward towards what we know is definitely going to be a first-round series matchup with the <clears throat> Bruins. Well, I, I look I look at the, the schedule ahead of the Leafs right now, and it's you know an opportunity to gain ground. I mean... Boston lost their second uh, consecutive game in regulation uh, on Tuesday in Columbus. Uh, the Leafs are four points behind them with a game in hand. And if you look at the three games and four nights, they embark uh, starting tonight against the Hawks. They play Philadelphia, who's out of the playoffs right now, but you know trying to get back in the race on Friday. And then they play at Ottawa on Saturday. So it's three non-playoff teams that, that you should beat, but we've known – you know, this season, the, the Leafs have trouble beating the teams that they should beat and sometimes have trouble beating the teams that they would have trouble with, like Tampa Bay. And coming off that game on Monday, where I think they were thoroughly outplayed and not really in it at most points in the game, I think they need to step up and, and sort of take out the Hawks, who are, you know, still have Kane and Taves and still have some talent there, but this is a team that they should beat. The Chicago Blackhawks represent a crumbling empire one one that's not not t- totally irrelevant now but it's glory of the past so the leafs aren't playing against the team that they're trying to measure up to i think they're playing against the team that they respect um but need to beat and move forward in thinking about how to nip at the heels of a team like the boston bruins and then of course we saw a just a thorough slap down a beat down um at scotia bank arena <clears throat> the other night and for my money the tampa bay lightning are going to win the stanley cup and if they don't it's a huge missed opportunity for them because this this team is ready to win they're playing every single game like they're ready to win and you know i hope that mike babcock and the crew uh amid all of that other stupid stuff um, that really didn't have much of an impact on the game, but had huge impact on social media, sadly thought about how they can become that team that kicked the crap out of them the other night. And the Leafs have that capability. My friend, they are, they are the heirs of heir apparent in my opinion, and the heir to the throne who will overtake the throne by any means necessary is the Tampa Bay lightning. So Mike, it's, it's all a learning process right now because the Leafs are smart. They'll absorb it. The question is, what are they going to do between now and whenever their season ends to set themselves uh, apart from most of the rest of the league and push themselves even an inch closer to becoming that next team after Tampa to win a Stanley Cup? Well, I mean, right now in the, in the immediate future, it's getting, your, getting yourself healthy and getting yourself on the path to having the most success you possibly can in the playoffs. And that means right now for the Leafs, um, you know, there was some illness in the locker room with Zach Hyman almost missing the game and Casper Kapanen being held out. That's a short-term thing. The long-term thing is uh, the health of the defense. And it was encouraging that Travis Dermott was skating uh, I think it was on Monday at uh, Scotiabank Arena well before the morning skate, but he's got a shoulder injury, so he's just trying to stay in shape and stay keep his conditioning up. It's probably the same thing that happened with Matthews while his shoulder injury was happening, so I don't think you're going to see Dermot until probably late March, which, which is around the four-week uh, diagnosis for the shoulder injury. We haven't heard anything about Jake Gardner. There was supposed to be some sort of indication of the severity of his back problems and you know where that would take them. Um, the, the news from the Marlies is not encouraging either. Sheldon Keefe indicated on the weekend that Callie Rosen and Andreas Borgman, who both have NHL experience and who probably would have been in the mix to be called up 
with injuries, they're nowhere close to being ready to come back. So right now it's surviving the next four weeks with a rotation of Justin Hall, Ozaganoff, and Marinson, mm-hmm. and probably overworking your top four, which is not the best thing. But if they can get home ice advantage uh, doing that, that and they get their players back late in the season, then it may work out for the Look, Leafs. Look, it's never going to be good enough for – us. It's never going to be good enough for the Leafs. It should never be good enough for Mike Babcock, Kyle Dubas, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner. The list goes on and on and on. It should never be good enough for anyone ever because that's how you continue to get better. I mean, when you look back and everything's done, you could be satisfied with what you accomplished and know that you have steps A, B, and C to take to reach the pinnacle. But where we are right now, I don't think anybody can be satisfied. Even though the Leafs are on pace for 100-plus points, um, th- this team can be so much better. And, and that's what I try to reiterate when we have these discussions, Mike. The, the ultimate prize is the Stanley Cup. There's nothing. Sustainability and all this nonsense. You, you will build sustainability if you're responsible in the way you construct your project. You will be sustainable. When the Blackhawks built their, their championships, three of them, they didn't think to themselves, you know, let's – Let's build a team that will get up 95 points a season for uh, 10 years, and then we'll see what happens. No, let's win Stanley Cups, and we know that when we win one, we're going to win more and more and more because we'll have pieces that need to go out. Other pieces can be interchanged. We have our core. We go forward. The Leafs are doing the same thing. I think the key between that, and I've said this before, Mike, between now and whenever is to continue to get better. And guys like Martin Marinson and or Igor Ozaganov, especially Marinson, I, I don't like him. I know you don't like him. A lot of people don't like him. I don't know, Martin. You probably don't go on social media. Thankfully, there's no reason to. But um, a lot of people think you're trash. Go out there and, I don't know, be better. Be a guy who <laughs> makes a difference. I-, I doubt if he can. But may- be a guy that makes a difference. You have this opportunity now. And you're on a, you're on a team that um, is going to the f- first round of the playoffs to take on a, a Boston Bruins team that needs to be dumped. And maybe he's a part. Maybe these guys maybe these guys are setting themselves up for a really big moment because let's face facts, Mike, the Leafs Stanley cup for this season is acquired by doing one thing, beating the Boston Bruins in a best of seven. Yeah. And I, I, I said yesterday and writing a little piece for uh, one of the websites, many websites I write for <laughs> that, you know, the, 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 the most, the, the most, um, are you doing, are you doing an article thing. for Wayfair now? No, no. The most, the most irrational thing that uh, came out early in the season was the fact that the Leafs were a Stanley Cup favorite. You know, well, when they signed Tavares, we were all there, when they were, like everybody was hyped up. I said, right, I said but, they were going to win but, the Stanley Cup uh, about four months ago. I mean, but again, though, I'll say whatever I need to say on any given day because, I, we're, you know, no, it, we're just having fun here, right? And we feel what we feel. Oh well, no, I, I, I get, I get that. But what, what I'm saying is, and we're talking, we're not talking about people who are emotionally invested in the team, like both of us are. You know, we, we followed them since we were kids. We're talking about people who the bottom line is the odds. The bottom line is betting lines. Yep. And we're talking about like Vegas having the Leafs as the Stanley Cup favorite. And obviously they don't know what hockey is because you look at that. T- I, and I've been saying this. I've been saying this since July. Great. They have one of the best forward compliments in the league. That's not going to change. You're never going anywhere with a defense mm. that has players like Ozaganov and Marinson mm. and a 38-year-old Ron Hainsey playing 25 minutes a night. And until they have a better defense, this team is going nowhere, especially in a, div- in a division where they have Tampa and Boston who are the measuring okay. sticks. They have to first get by them to win a Stanley Cup. Please never use Ron Hainsey's name in vain. Ron Hainsey means more to that defense core than Martin Marinson or Igor Azaganov or uh, Nikita Zaitsev, in my opinion. It's, if, if there's a problem back there, it's not his fault. He, he, should be a, he should win another Stanley Cup with the Maple Leafs as the sixth or seventh defenseman. So, the, the, so anytime he has a problem, you, you pat him on the back and say, Ron, thanks for being here, man. You've won your cups. Your, your Viking River cruise is waiting to go. Thanks for being here. The, this should have been better for you, Ron. It's it's unfortunately he is here a couple of years too a little bit too early. If if Ron Hainsey were the sixth or seventh in a, a year or two, and Kyle Dubas went out and actually made some responsible 
acquisitions to help make the defense a championship caliber blue line core, then we'd be fine. But people who get on Ron Hainsey but don't want to get on Jake Gardner or William Nylander or Martin Marinson, I mean, they're hypocrites. And I, I don't want to get I don't want to start slamming Leaf fans and stuff like that, as I'm apt to do. But it's just reality. It's just truth. Ron Hainsey is not the problem because he was not brought here to be Tim Horton. He was here to be a complimentary piece. So the thing is, he can't compliment anybody because you don't have enough pieces to compliment. Mike, before we go, um, it's unbelievable. I'm just checking out the, the stats on NHL.com. Is it okay to look at basic stats or do I need to um, get my uh, Google uh, sheets out? Um, so Tampa, 110 points, 70 games played. Uh, 12 to go 110 points with 12 games to go like that's that's lunacy the Leafs 89 points Boston 93 so those three are locked into the top three the question is can the Leafs somehow go on a five or six game win streak here towards the end which they probably could and get get ahead of Boston they might be able to do it <clears throat> on the final day but what's really stands out to me Mike and I just I don't know when you were younger and you watched hockey or did you just get into hockey like in the uh, early 2000s Mike you're American you you, hockey was, did you discover hockey late? Um, when I was younger, I used to look at the box scores because I was so excited about how many points Wayne Gretzky would get on any given night, right? And it was always Gretzky versus Lemieux. And I, I just want to see how, how – this is back in the day when points were just easy to get, right? It's Gretzky a five night. He'd have five or three five-point nights in a week. Nikita Kucherov has 111 points. Pat Kane, who's with the uh, Blackhawks tonight in Toronto against the Leafs, has 98 points. Connor McDavid, 98. For as crappy a season as the Oilers are and as much of a, um, you know, a burning mattress as that whole situation is, McDavid just quietly another 98 points. And we go on about Mitch Marner. I love the kid. Best player on the team right now. 82 points. Well, maybe John Tavares might be just as good. 82 points. In a lot of ways, this is a, a visceral, optical... In, in some ways, tangible way to to see the difference in caliber. I mean, the Leafs, for as good as we think they are, and they really are in reality, there's still such there's still a ways to go. So, I guess we have to temper, and I have to do this myself: temper the expectation, temper the the disappointment with an understanding that things have been good. We'll look back on it and realize it's been a successful season. And for as much of a splash as they made in July 1st last year, and for as great a talent core as this group has, and as flashy as this team can be, if you want to win that big jug, man, you still have to be better. And we should ex be excited about the challenges that are imminent and potentially overcoming them, but also be excited about the opportunity to take this group that's not necessarily ready, but it's primed and wants to be ready, go forward and make it happen, Mike. No disputing that the pieces are there to build this team, to, be, to have them be a Stanley Cup uh, contender and possibly win a cup in the next mm -hmm. few years. It's just a question of the support structure around those star players, and that's going to be the task of how to do this uh, over the next few years to get the defense better, to you know have forwards that support Matthews, Marner, Tavares, that you know provide a different skill set. You know, not just pure skill throughout the lineup, not just all speed, but guys who will play with aggressiveness, guys who provide some size. You saw that in Tampa Bay. That's a versatile team. It's not a team that's one dimensional. Now, just to, to briefly, um, the Leafs did sign uh, a kid, uh, an NCAA product uh, named Joseph Dusek. Um, with 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 these, yeah, I mean, I think, and you know, I I think that the best college free agent ever might have been Marty San Luis. Oh, for sure. Um, but and he's and he's all a famer. But you know, Tyler Bozek was a pr pretty big success for the Leafs. You know, I know that people have criticized him over the years for you know for certain things, but I'm not going there because I think he, overall he was a success. Mm. And I think you know if they would have been able to sign Jimmy VC, I think he would have been a success there. Um, he's doing okay with the Rangers. Um, we'll see what uh, Joseph Dusek, and then they may they may go down the road of signing another NCAA uh, player in the next day or two. We'll see. What about Fabian Brunstrom? I think he's a car mechanic in Stockholm. <laughs> so, the, well, hold on a sec. And who's his valet? Aki Berg. No, no, no. Oh no, excuse me, Ricard Ricard Valine. That's that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and whatever happened to Jonas Gibson? I don't.